Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lokolom Dolong. Good to be home. Since I'm far gone, I'm not even fun. Let me know my subscriber. It's a bonus. Sitano sa milabiwa, ujala na nibotu ya. Tizi yoya miinge ya. Tifunda nje utando la. Sichale ku nyesa ku sa. Ubengo wa, tibengo wa. Tite na mite. Yeah, my friend, I don't really want to beat about the bush. Let's just get into it. This video is specifically about mathematics and how to get that distinction you've always wanted. So we're going to start generally. Then we're going to go into the specifics of the actual topics as a mathematics. All right. So number one, my friend, what is important is to do it every day. I think that goes generally without saying. Do in maths every day. It's literally like going to the gym. Klaus Yoko Kala is going to be much, much painful. But the more you go, the more the muscle gets used to it and the more enjoyable it becomes. And at the end of the day, you'll feel bad for not going to the gym just for once in a day. Then sometimes you'll even go twice or three times or four times in a gym. They really get crazy with it. In maths, literally in jail. I need to clear something up. I know there can be some misnomers here. Mamelan, doing maths every day doesn't mean that because I covered it at school, I've done it. Just because I'm doing the homework, I means I've done it. Just because I'm doing an assignment, means I've done it. No, it means that in that schedule that you have for yourself to go study. Okay, I'm gonna study. I'm gonna stay ahead. I'm gonna do what, 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 what. You do emails. You do it in one way. Stay fresh. Number one, while your brain is still active. Ne? Especially right about when you're starting a study session. Start with maths, you know, really open up your eyes and realize that there are some things you really don't know and you really need to work on. So always do emails every day as in do it, not including homework, not including classwork, not including work you've done at school, not including any assignment. It's just you doing it every day. Number two, Buffet, while we are being general now, always do emails with understanding. Like in any other subject, once you take away the understanding part, that is where you reach problems that when you can't solve. In maths, you realize that once you get to a certain level, ne, it's all about understanding because understanding creates an interlink between the topics so that even in a problem that is new to you, that you've never seen in a past paper, you apply the simple basics to carry you through. Because ne? maths is about understanding the laws, understanding how certain formulas came about, understanding the rules of a maths. I can't do this because this and that and that. I can't do this because and that and that and that and that. It's like literally trying to find your way through a maze. You need to understand the actual pattern of how things work in maths, Buffett. You can't just be like, no, why did you solve it like this? Why did you take this path? I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I think I saw the teacher doing it last time. No, guys. Mm -mm. You're shooting yourself in the foot. Apply understanding. Pa. Apply understanding. Why are we doing this? Ask in class, why are we doing this? Apply understanding. Number three, Buffet, I can't overemphasize in the past papers. And understand the umdo or your balai test your maths. Did you do past papers? Ati, no, I only did one or two. Guys, there are so many past papers that are available. There are past papers for terms. There are past papers for provinces. There are past papers for different years. There are, there's a barrage of past papers and it's literally asking the same thing. It's like someone telling you, here's a cheat code to go past an exam. We're going to ask the same thing that's on this cheat code. And when you look at the cheat code and you're like, um... I don't understand this cheat code, so I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to do it, try my best in that exam. Then you come back and you ask me, how do you get a distinction? Ah, Buffett. No, 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 no. Each cheat code, equal pass papers. Each lender, the rule is like this. The more pass papers you do, the higher the chances that you get a distinction. It's as simple as that. And guy, yeah, no, some of you are unfortunate subscribers. I made a beautiful video on how to do past papers it's a step by step it's step number one step number two step number three it's very beautiful people loved it a lot so if when you haven't seen it go check it out but just know that past papers are your key ne? to a locked door ne? otherwise you'll keep on knocking on that door until you believe us when we tell you that the key is in the past paper number four give fear to there's a tendency that you guys have ne? when something is difficult you run away from it stop that thing I know maths is difficult, but do not run away from it. In fact, start with maths. Even if you're changing your journey and you're trying to improve your subjects, don't leave maths to be the last subject that you improve. Because first of all, you're going to get lazy and feel like, no man, the distinctions that I already have are enough, which is false. 
and then after that you're gonna be like okay it's fine even if it meds maybe power level four then everything else they'll understand it they don't understand trust me you need to start with the meds i don't care if it is on level four or three as new subjects i don't care start with mathematics make sure that mathematics is at least a level six or a distinction then you feel like you've made progress then after that you can go change everything else trust me if you have the power and the strength to change your mathematics to be a good mark everything else will follow because you'll put the same amount of effort and the same amount of energy that you did for mathematics in other subjects. Don't run away from maths. It will not be beneficial for you at the end. Number five, give I feel like it's one of the most important. Always ask for help. Titus Dima was Pokotini was Tobe and go ask for help. Nah. Let me tell you a little story. I remember when I was in grade 11 changing my journey. You guys from TikTok already know this, but it's fine. I was changing my journey. I decided to start with maths, home language, and physics. I had to change my journey to try, you know, improve and get good marks. You know? I went to this other guy. Uh, shout out to him. Usfuile Suzanne. That guy, I remember, I used to visit his home on Sundays. Imagine. And be like, man, please, chief, please help me. You know, let's practice these past papers together, you know. And be like, hey, demen, was I'm demen. And we'd go by Coslos and we'd basically enjoy and we'd do maths. Even if it's difficult, be like, I'm demen, man. Oh, eat it, okay, okay, okay. What's this, man? Literally guided me with that mathematics. Yeah, bo. And also, what you can seek help from is your teachers. Some teachers basically dedicate their lives to teaching, right? And they end up teaching extra classes for free right join those extra classes that is a form of help ne? joining any available extra classes i remember when i was doing grade 12 and grade 11 there were so many extra classes like there was good long pro meds there were other ones that were run in this other high school like after school and there was one that was run by nmu i forgot the name of it but even gave you a tablet like guys go hunting for help go hunting for any tutoring that you can find that is going to be useful basically just to guide you ne? it's like lando nigga it generally just to start up your journey then after that once you get gra grasp the content your maths trust me you'll run away with that thing like nobody's business and you'll even fall in love with it who knows before we continue i just wanted to mention that the process of asking for help it's not easy ne? i never said it was easy because sometimes you get rejections people don't reject you because they hate you sometimes generally people don't have the time just because when you're ready for getting help doesn't mean that they are ready for helping you. Don't take it personally. It's people's time. We only have so much time and you need to do things that we enjoy. And if someone doesn't enjoy helping you, then it's fine. Go ask someone else. And sometimes who's a net benefit? And those man. No, don't be that. Be someone who brings value to someone. Yeah, but like for example, if you know that they are struggling in a specific subject, offer to help them in that subject. Ne? Then now you know, you're bringing value to that time that they're offering you. And sometimes like you can even um offer an exchange. But dude, I really appreciate this help. I I, I think I wanna, you know, give you 20 rand per hour or something. Like be of value for their time. Because Nina ni Nina, you go ask for help from someone, then I decline. Get the shala ge umdu, then you catch your feelings. Utila mdu no more nuku sang him fundu. And what? It's his time or her time. Like, don't be bitter about it. Continue, go ask for help for someone else and bring that value to them. Ne? And sometimes if you born bad man, this thing is beneficial. You can even do something nice for them, like bring them something nice. Just to encourage them that they can even help someone else. Ne? And if you have a commitment with someone for a specific time, be early, be on time. Respect their time, Buffy. Because, uh, yeah, there's that thing. Ngani. Go When you ask for help, make sure that it's worth it for that other person as well. Number six, Buffy, is actually going to be sneak peek. Skapa two. Ne? So number six speaks about maths topics specifically. Ne? One thing you'll realize about high-performing people with mathematics, they understand it topics generally. They understand but this topic weighs more. There's more marks here and it requires more understanding. And it has those questions if you question you one in five marks or seven marks or something, right? And they understand but man, these topics mean probably like six marks or something. So I can't start with this. I need to focus on that. I need to so they understand Zongi topics paper one and paper two. Understand which which topics basically weigh more. Which topics are going to offer you more marks if you master them easily? 
ne? Meaning that when you master a big topic and a big topic and a big topic, ne? Or share those topics, it means that a majority of that paper you've already mastered, ne? So ni nendo ni nza ni vile ni ni ne gulu gulu. Umdu you just do maths, and you need to have that overall understanding. Okay, as I'm doing this maths, this section le, ne? It only weighs a certain amount in this paper. This section, we have. Ah, you wanna learn this one? It's it's you wanna Euclidean geometry, analytical geometry. If you understand that thing, you know. Okay, no one goes. Ah, you wanna a paper. Okay, at least it means looks like a poster because I'm confident. But okay, a big portion of that paper is mine. Yeah, but you know, I take that topic is in color. You know, okay, yeah, no, I understand this. I understand this. Then you look at the major topic and you like. Yo, this is gonna be so difficult. Da, 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 da. Had you started with the difficult, say my advice, Nagla, your girl. Had you started with that difficult one, you master it. Feel very confident when you're writing because you know that I've already have the majority of the paper in the palm of my hand. Now, shodanje, to understand the easy, we are going to understand the part. Shodanje, part. Shodanje, part. So now you've understood. Okay, this one weighs more. This one weighs less. This one weighs that. This one weighs that. Now, when, where do you stand? Ne? How comfortable are you with this topic on a scale of one to ten? If I would give you questions on this topic, how many marks or how what percentage of the marks do you think you would get? Ne? And where do you get stuck? Ne? What are your knowledge gaps for each topic? Then I figure out, okay, if I don't know it, where did this topic actually start? No, it didn't start in grade 12. Okay, it started in, in grade 11, perhaps. No, but they introduced it in grade 10. Then let me go and refresh the knowledge. How did it actually start? Now, you go with it and be like, okay, they keep adding this. Oh, here they added this. Okay, here they added this. By the time you get to grade 12, you, are, you understand the progression and the growth of that topic. No, man, this topic is very difficult. It's because it's already developed like a grade 12 and like grade 11. Now, go understand those basics, understand what you don't know. I wasn't any paper, you don't know what you know, you don't know what you don't know, you don't know anything, most yeah. So, you need to know what you know, and you need to know what you don't know. Ne? So, that also, okay, this is what I don't know, then I can work on it. What are you gonna work on if you don't know? I give a fit with that being said, we are at the end of our video. Now I did mention that I want to keep it short and sweet because I'm preserving a concentration span here too. But otherwise, we're going to have a part two, a part three, and probably be even a part four because maths is a lot. So stay tuned, Buffet. To don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, and comment below. I'll be liking and commenting and responding. You know me most. Otherwise, thank you, Buffet, too.